Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are performing excerpts from Argentinian composer Ariel Ramirez, Navidad Nuestra, Our Christmas. Our soloist tonight is the amazing Jimmy Kansa.
one more. Are you in the mood for one more? They're so fabulous. The San Francisco Boys Chorus. Did I mention Grammy Award winning San Francisco Boys Chorus? Let's hear for them. Now watch how disciplined they are leaving the stage too. If all kids were like that, maybe I'd have one. It's gonna be a great ceremony here at City Hall, the rotunda of San Francisco City Hall. Look around. If you've been here before, you know what a beautiful, honored spot we're in. If you've never been to this city hall, it's yours. Come by sometimes. There are meetings going on, there's business happening, but there's also celebrations of all kinds. Tonight is one of those celebrations. We're going to be lighting the tree you see at the top here, the beautiful tree of hope. And uh, we have some more entertainment for you before we get to the program, a little bit more music. And some of you I see are like mildly singing along. No one minds if you sing along as long as you know the words and can sing or if you just feel the move, whatever. 
All right, a little bit more music now from Tammy Hall, an accomplished uh, keyboard artist, and she's going to play for us a little bit. Tammy Hall, ladies and gentlemen. No wonder she's all over town. Tammy Hall on the electric piano. Let's add another bit of a mix to it. We have a very talented vocalist who's also everywhere I see. I turn the paper, there she is. Let's welcome Veronica Klaus. Thank you, Donna. I can 
Only give you love that lasts forever And a promise to be near each time that you call And the only heart I own will be yours and yours alone. That's all, baby, that's all. I can only give you country walks in springtime and a hand to hold when leaves start to fall and a love whose guiding light is gonna warm your Christmas night that's all, baby, that's all. There are those I'm sure who have told you they're going to give you, give you the world as a toy. All I have is two arms to enfold you And a love that time cannot withdraw Oh, if you're wondering what I'm asking in return, dear My demands are so small Say it's me that you adore From now till evermore That's all, baby That's all. That's Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide bright. From now on, our troubles will be out, out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles, miles away. days, happy golden days of yore, faithful friends who are near 
near to us will be near to us once more through the years we all will be together if the fates allow hang a shining star upon the highest bough oh, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your hearts be light. From now on, our troubles will be out, out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be miles, miles away Here we are as in olden days Happy golden days of yore Faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once more through the years we all will be together if the fates allow until then Yourselves a merry little Christmas now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in the holiday spirit now, are you? Isn't that beautiful? Let's hear it for Tammy Hall and Veronica Klaus. I got jealous for a minute there. Some of the members of the San Francisco Boys Chorus are getting more pictures than I am. I don't know about this. You know, as you look around this room, I hope you'll all for a moment think of events you've been to in City Hall in this very rotunda or maybe one of the meeting rooms or one of the offices, there have been so many wonderful weddings, so many celebrations, so many heart-rending speeches, and yes, some sad occasions too, but all a part of our community and our beautiful city. As you look around this room tonight, what a diverse combination we have. It makes me smile, but it probably doesn't make Nebraska smile. We live in a richly diverse city, 
and our elected officials represent it, our events here represent it, and the tree lighting should certainly represent it, and indeed it does. We call it the Tree of Hope, and every year we get messages from all over the country, all over the world, that are put on origamis and then put on this very unique, unusual tree. There are many cities who, that have holiday trees, but no one has the Tree of Hope. It was started by an organization, and I now have the chance to introduce you to that organization's founder and executive director, who failed to put this in the pr proper amount of type here, sorry. No, little things happen. The sound is better, I think you can hear. I just have to go slowly, they told me. It's my pleasure to introduce the executive director of the Rainbow World Fund. This organization creates this holiday tree now. This is the seventh, seventh year. Let's hear for that. Seven years of anything is a long. Hmm. Rainbow World Fund was founded 12 years ago. He had a concept that he wanted to think locally, but he wanted to act globally. And indeed, he has, he has figured out a way to strengthen the LGBT community by reaching out to the world on their behalf. Rainbow World Fund's a powerful force, compassion, concern. Rainbow World Fund helps others by promoting philanthropy from the LGBT community across the globe. Since 2000, they have distributed nearly four million dollars in humanitarian aid to communities in need around the world. Let's hear it. I know Jeff thinks big, but I wonder if he ever thought that big that they'd be going to Cuba and Asia and all kinds of places across the world, South America, and helping one person at a time. And tonight, helping kick off the holiday season in San Francisco. Welcome founder and executive director of the Rainbow World Fund, Jeff Cotter. Thanks, Donna. Thanks for that great introduction. And I must say, you look particularly fabulous tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're not familiar with Rainbow World Fund, we're an international humanitarian service agency based in the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and friends community. So we're gay and straight people coming together to help heal the world. And what we do is we work within our community to educate people about issues of humanitarian aid and world need. And as we raise our community's consciousness, we, fund, we raise funds to support relief efforts all around the world. Our projects focus on landmine eradication, hunger, hunger safe drinking water, um, disaster relief, and all kinds of different ways of helping people. We have ongoing projects in Cambodia, Haiti, Honduras, Guatemala, South Africa. We've also helped out in a number of humanitarian aid disasters, such as the uh, uh, tsunami in Southeast Asia uh, a number of years ago, the earthquake and tsunami in Japan last year, and during Hurricane Katrina, uh, we helped by distributing one million pounds of food aid. Yeah. And all of that is coming uh, from the LGBT and friends community. So we work uh, as ambassadors for our, our community and uh, we help change people's minds and hearts about who we are and what we care about. Besides providing humanitarian aid, um, we try to inspire hope in all of our projects. And we found that uh, hope is really just as important as aid, if not more so. Uh, we've worked with a lot of uh, communities uh, in desperate situations around the world, and we've found with providing a little bit of humanitarian aid and a lot of um, encouragement and support and hope, it's amazing what people in desperate circumstances can do to improve their lives. And so uh, seven years ago, we really had a feeling that in the United States, we really need to increase our hope also. And we decided to do that by creating a global art project, the World Tree of Hope. 
And uh, what, you've, what you see behind you is a uh, live 23-foot uh, Christmas tree, and it's covered with uh, over 10,000 pieces of origami. Most of the origami on the tree is white cranes, and all of the white cranes on the tree are inscribed with people's wishes and hopes for the future of the world. Uh, Mayor Lee and I, we put out an invitation that goes out uh, virally through the internet, and we ask people to think about what they want for the future of the world and share it with us. And wishes are sent in from all over North America, Europe, uh, Africa. R really, we've got wishes uh, coming in from almost every country in the world now. And uh, people are um, just expressing uh, all kinds of amazing hopes and dreams for the future of the world, which is really encouraging for us. Um, we create the tree as a symbol of global un unity and hope, and uh, we're going to continue to add wishes to the tree all through the month of December, so we would love uh, for you to go to our website, which is rainbowfund.org, and send us a wish. It's free and it's open to everyone, and we will print out your wish uh, on a piece of paper, fold it into a crane, and, and put it up on the tree. Um, now, I want to thank um, some key people uh, who helped with this year's tree. Uh, first, I want to start off with our core team, our core creative team, and that it consists of uh, Karen Kai, Linda Mihara. Uh, thank you, guys. They've been working on the tree for seven years. And um, this year, we also had the help of dozens of volunteers. Uh, let's see. I want to particularly acknowledge the students from UC Berkeley's Alpha Phi Omega service fraternity. The volunteers from One Brick. Gay for Good, the San Francisco chapter. You guys are here, eh? The Bridgman. The Left Coast Theater, uh, Skip, and the staff of Martuni's Bar. Yeah. And uh, Bernie Man. We had a bunch of burners helping us this year. Yeah. And uh, also, of course, I'd like to thank uh, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services and City Hall Events Department. Uh, we've worked with them for seven years and they're always wonderful. So, uh, thank you. Jeff Cotter. It was his idea at the beginning. I'm, he must be very proud. That's a beautiful tree. Um, and there are hundreds of cranes. When you look at it from here, it looks like it's snow covered, the tree, doesn't it? Well, you're in San Francisco, that's not snow. Those are origamis, and each one has to be folded. I mean, it's an incredible project. I always thought of origami as something you just kind of did in a class that you were bored, you know, you were folding, that. but no, it's an art form, and it makes a beautiful tree, and behind all that creativity is a person, this name was just mentioned, she has been here all seven years, Linda Mihara, she's a professional origami artist. Now you. You may know her work, and you may not realize you know her work. She has done professional origami training and production for Mitsubishi, for Febreze. She's created origami models for Disney, Pixar, Industrial Light and Magic. And she's here today because this is part of her labor of love, the World Tree of Hope. Let's welcome Linda Mihara. Thank you, Donna. That's a wonderful introduction. Appreciate that. And you do look magnificent. You too. Thank you. So this is a labor of love. Um, this is my seventh year of participation. Uh, I get a call one day from Jeff Cotter, and he says that he had this concept for this tree. And he had heard about the story about Sadako. And it's a very famous story that was a true story that was the inspiration for this tree. Um, I came on board because I am the professional origami artist, and the story of Sadako goes, in Japan, if you have a wish you want to have come true, you fold 1,000 cranes. By the time you finish your 1,000th crane, your wish will be granted. So during the Hiroshima bombing, a young girl, Sadako Sasaki, became ill from 
the bombing and had uh, leukemia. She remembered this tradition of folding a thousand cranes, and her wish, of course, was to get better. So she embarked on folding the cranes. Unfortunately, she passed before she completed her task. However, her schoolmates completed the rest of the thousand, and, which is buried with her. Uh, there is a monument um, to her in Hiroshima at the Hiroshima Peace Park. And it's really the whole folding of a thousand cranes is celebrated worldwide. So as, this, as an inspiration for this tree, so how do we go about doing this? It's a big um, undertaking. We have so many volunteers over the years. Uh, we've bridged the Japanese American community with the LGBT community, the Chinese community, Hispanic community. And it's really been a community effort from the city. And it's been an amazing project. Each crane takes about 30 folds to create. And we have over 10,000 ornaments on this tree this year. This year's tree is 23 feet tall. It is four and a half feet taller than the White House tree. <laughs> it is the world's largest origami tree. Yes. and took this year about 250 volunteers to help prep the models. Um, everything has to be not only hand folded, but wired, fireproofed, and then of course decorated or placed onto the tree. Um, it's really quite an amazing thing to look up close and uh, definitely think about what your hope and wish is for the world because by folding these cranes, we've given all of the wishes wings. We hope all the wishes come true, especially the wishes of the children. Thank you very much. Anybody else just get chills? I mean, it gives so much more meaning to the tree. Wow, that's a lot of hours. I'm not good at math, but I think it's a lot of hours. That's, uh, I can't imagine. And you have to love what you're doing, and I think she does. One more hand for Linda. She does a wonderful job. We truly do get wishes from all over the world, um, and we love to read some of them. We're gonna have two people come up in a minute and read, but before they do, we got a, a late wish, and it just came across on beautiful stationery. We cannot fold it because it's on Nancy Pelosi's stationery. We wouldn't do that. But Nancy Pelosi, our Democratic leader in the House, sent us this message. Each person puts in, in quotes, their wish for the world for the year. This is so well-worded, and if you know Nancy, it rings so true. My wish is to live in a society where marriage equality is a reality for all and where all American families are treated with dignity and equality. Nancy Pelosi. Okay, our next two speakers are going to come up together because we don't want to you know, take too much of your time here. We have a, a little schoolgirl and a supervisor of San Francisco. I bet you'll be able to tell which one's which. Um, the 10-year-old girl is the president of her class at Dianne Feinstein Elementary School, and the larger person is a member of the Board of Supervisors. Bring on Hannah O'Connell and Scott Wiener. So I'm not Hannah. Okay, so welcome to City Hall, everyone. Here we go. Uh, we'll be reading wishes uh, tonight, and we'll alternate. Um, the first is from Sister Janine Gramick of the Sisters of Loretto. My wish is that we achieve marriage equality in every state, and that we rescind DOMA on the federal level so we can achieve full equality for lesbian and gay relationships across the lands. I Wish the Bees Were Not Dying by Daria, age nine, from Livermore, California. That's a good one. Um, my hope is for improved economic conditions for my country's most vulnerable people, that we create healthy environments and green spaces, 
and that my countrymen and women become fully conscious of their ability to change things for the better. Emmanuel Jean-Baptiste from Haiti. My wish is for more justice for all of us, economic justice as well as social justice, starting with the recognition that poverty is not a sin. Dorothy Allison, the author. I wish for a world filled with more compassionate and generous people, where everybody shares uh, what they have and gives love without discrimination. I wish for a world without borders and walls. Juan Ramon Gutierrez, age 53, Corrientes, Argentina. I wish for a world for our children more just, more fair, and more kind than the one we now know. President Barack Obama. Now, this is a good one that Donna and I can very strongly identify with. Um, I wish that male fashion designers would be forced to wear the stuff they create for women, like stiletto heels. And it, it gets better. And that all politicians would have to live by the rules and laws they come up with for the rest of us, like the ones on food stamps and the minimum wage by Isabel Allende. And so I, uh, I promise that I will not take my clothes off in public. I wish it will snow in the morning so nobody does not have to go to school for two weeks. Michael, age 13, from Long Island, New York. Yeah. Free medical care for everyone. Dorothy Leung, age 72, New York, New York. I wish for all the lonely people in the world to find happiness. Danielle Steele, the author. Um, I wish we could bring all of our soldiers home now. Anonymous. Thank you, everyone. You can't make that stuff up, I tell you. That was incredible. I know when the mayor leaves town, they appoint a mayor for the day. I think maybe Hannah should be the supervisor for the day when uh, Scott's out of town. She did a great job. Thank you, Hannah. Okay, if you're following your program, throw it away. Uh, or take it home with you so you'll know who was here today. But we always have to change things around a little bit. I'm just so thrilled that we have the mayor here with us and we have the Consul General of Japan with us. And I just want to bring them on so they can do the official thing they've done now for several years. They exchange origami de decorations. It's kind of a symbolic uh, friendship act here in City Hall. Don't forget, San Francisco is where the United Nations was founded. So these things are not unusual to happen here. One more thing that's very interesting to me. This year, the Consul General's wife, Midori, coordinated the gathering of wishes for the Tree of Hope from nearly 40 other consulates across the globe. Thank you for doing that. And so now tonight, the Mayor of San Francisco, Ed Lee, the Consul General of Japan, and his name is, Imo wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, I have it, I have it, I have it, I have it, I have it. His name is Hiroshi Inamata. Happy holidays, everyone. Welcome to the great city of San Francisco. And I must say again, I know you've seen this, but that dress, Donna, it'll make Santa Claus stay up all night. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody again to City Hall and uh, to view our wonderful, wonderful Tree of Hope. Uh, it is something that I enjoy every year that it's been here. And I'll tell you, when, when it was announced that this was the tallest, the largest tree of hope in the United States, if not in the world, 
I also wanted to say my very first thought was San Francisco has also the biggest hearts in the world. Thanks to all of you. Thank you, Donna, for your wonderful MC work here every year and your beautiful presence. Jeff Carter, thank you very much. Congratulations and thank you on behalf of everyone in the city. We're so proud of your work. Karen Kai, someone I've known for 30 years, way back when I was still working in the community. Thank you, Karen, for you and all the volunteers from the Rainbow Fund to put this together, to place all of these 10,000 ornaments on our tree, to give us the kind of attention that we would like, not just because we have a great tree or city hall, but because we do always want to show our hearts first, especially during these holiday seasons. I know that's why all of you are here tonight. I want to also give a shout out to Isabel Allende. Thank you very much for being here, Isabel. <laughs> Linda Mahara, thank you for your wonderful, wonderful presentation. You know, the stories that Linda tells every year that updates us, these are the stories that I'm proud of because for every story that she's told about the original, the origin of origami, we inherit those stories and we need to spread them to generations of our friends and our children so they understand what hope is about. Alejandro Murguia, our San Francisco Poe Laureate. Thank you for being here tonight, Alejandro. I also know that Veronica Claus, thank you for being here, Veronica. Thank you for being here. The sisters. I was going to say the Sisters of Petulance, but it's the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Thank you for being here as well. And of course, you will hear, and you've heard them earlier, our San Francisco Boys Chorus. Thank you, Boys Chorus, for being here to celebrate. And then tonight, many of you will be treated to goodies and some refreshments, all donated through the World Fund and their volunteers and all the small businesses of San Francisco. Thank you for your wonderful donations during these holidays. I said earlier, the Tree of Hope is our symbol of tolerance and acceptance. And I know what's on my mind, hopefully by the end of this week, is that we will see more than this symbol. We will see the wishes that this tree represents for all of us that will make this world, with our own decisions, with our own hands, more acceptance, more tolerance, as we wait with great anxiousness on our U.S. Supreme Court to exhibit their tolerance in our United States for the same-sex marriage that we all deserve. I also wanted to Again, acknowledge this is the season of giving. Hope that you will join us from now to the end of January. Bring a donation in to City Hall whenever you have the visit. We have canisters for those that are needy, particularly for food during this season. Also, if you would join us in the weekend of December 15th and 16th, we're going to have family orientation outside with snow day here in City Hall. We're bringing snow in again. We're going to enjoy this with our snow day, December 15th and 16th. You're all welcome to come, bring the kids and all the extended families. And if I may say again, these holidays and what this tree represents is our best hope and our wishes. The holidays should never be about ourselves. What reminds us and what this tree will continue doing is that we have to remember others that are perhaps less fortunate, share our hearts and our minds and our resources with them. And it's just like Japan for what they've done. If you read the papers recently, you know that Japan suffered a very harsh earthquake and tsunami a while back. And they could have easily said that we are victims of a natural disaster. But when the country heard that the debris was crossing international lines all the way to the West Coast, 
they did not claim victim. They also said we could help. And that's why we heard the news of Japan donating $5 million to help the West Coast also deal with the debris. That is a wonderful, wonderful gesture of humanitarian work. And so it is my honor tonight that I stand here with Council General Inamata, welcoming him and the symbol of his country and knowing the origins of the origami, the uh, origami, and knowing that we have his blessing and his country's blessing in working with us to make the world better, to create more peace, to create tolerance and acceptance for everyone, and that this will always improve the quality of life for everyone on this planet. And so it is with that that I welcome uh, uh, Mr. Inamata and the Council General of Japan here to say a few words before we exchange our blessings to each other as cities and as countries trying to help the world improve. Council General. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well, good evening. It is always my great pleasure to be here. Uh, this is the seventh the world annual uh, World Tree of Hope celebrations here in, at City Hall. I would like to thank first Shirley, uh, Jeff Colin, and uh, the uh, Rainbow World Fund, and Mayor Edry, and the San Francisco Japanese American community, uh, Karen Kai and Linda Mihara for arranging this uh, ceremony. This is actually my third time to be here to stage to, to say a few words. The first time, it was two years ago, surely, and then we celebrated the world champions of San Francisco Giants. And this year as well, we have many things to celebrate, many things to cherish, including uh, the San Francisco Championship uh, in the second time in three years. But at the same time, uh, there are lots to grieve, like um, natural disasters and then um, military conflicts in Middle East and African continent still we do have. And as May Ed Lee mentioned last year, we had a terrible uh, natural disaster that hit Japan. Then 20 months have passed since uh, the earthquake and tsunami uh, that um, uh, devastated Japan. Hope, the theme of tonight's celebration, has been one of the um, essential components on Japan's road to rehabilitation and reconstruction. The hope of the Japanese people and the support of the international community has driven our revival. Japan is still on its way to recovery. But I wish once again to thank you for your continued friendship and compassion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our celebration tonight demonstrates our community's dedication to this hope for world peace, love, acceptance, and rehabilitation. I hope that we will continue or create a trusting legacy, lasting legacy here in San Francisco City Hall. As um, Linda mentioned and also Mayor Lee said, uh, this is the largest tree of origami. So what a beautiful, what a beautiful tree we have. So each crane on the tree contains the wish from all over the world. I'm optimistic that our hope will grow just like this tree. May we make these wishes come true by allowing the cranes to fly towards their hopes and dreams. Thank you, thank you very much. Now I would like to exchange cranes with Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Consul General Inamata, and our Mayor, Ed Lee. Let's hear for them. I tell you, the crowd grows every year for this event. It grows in size and in diversity. You are all welcome here. I hope you know that. And I know uh, Ms. Uh, Mayor Ed Lee would reflect those, uh, those words as well. He loves seeing this diversity. We were laughing about it a minute ago. Just what, uh, what, a, what a wonderful thing to have in City Hall, right here in the Rotunda. One person we've forgotten to mention, and a lot of this is in your program, please take it home, but this tree was donated by the Delancey Street Foundation. Let's hear for them. Get your tree from them. I always try to try keep an eye out for our elected officials. I did see our fire chief walk in. Joanne Hayes-White is with us. Thank you, Joanne, for being here. And now we're going to back, go back to our regular program because we have several people who are, have wishes, who have uh, spoken words they want to give to you that kind of express their uh, take on the Tree of Hope. First of all, mentioned once before, but now here to speak to you, Poet Laureate Alejandro Mejia. Teaches at San Francisco State University, short story writer and editor, two-time American Book Award winner, and here he is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Donna, you look fabulous. You remind me of my first girlfriend. <laughs> Only she was not as tall. But uh, I want to thank the mayor, Mayor Lee, the mayor's office, Jeff at the uh, World Rainbow Fund, and all of you for uh, the invitation to be here tonight. We are so privileged to be able to gather together in community and joy and celebration and hope while so much of the world is plunged in darkness and chaos and war and intolerance. I am honored to read a poem for you tonight. <clears throat> I, I usually, the last time I tried this, I, I pulled out a parking ticket. <laughs> I got lucky this time. Uh, in Spanish, hope is esperanza. The plural, esperanzas, many hopes. This is esperanzas in memory of Sadako. for Mother Nature and the oceans, for the rivers and the forest. Who will speak for the salmon, for the redwoods and the bristle cones, for the sailors lost at sea, for the eyes that search for them, for the soldier and the soldier's widow, for the one in jail and for the one that waits for the one in jail, and for the one who never had a chance to speak when found guilty, for the lovers torn apart, and for the ones kept apart by laws and prejudices, for the sparrows and the hummingbirds, for the weeds and the flowers, para las mujeres de Juarez, for the women of Gaza, for the one tortured in the darkness, for the refugees wrapped in barbed wire, for each and every human being who sleeps tonight out in the rain, for shelter for every human being who sleeps tonight out in the rain, <clears throat> for the child with nostalgia to be born, for every child to get home safe, for the elderly alone, for the worldwide end of hate, disease, and poverty, for a just world still to come where no one goes hungry and the water is clean and prisons are outlawed and schools are free and exciting and poetry Mandatory. <clears throat> for police and politicians. For the Indians of the Amazon. For the jaguar faced with extinction. For the last battle to stop 
for every last gun to be forged into a pen for the most hopeless, hopeless in the world, those without even dreams to get by. Here, there's 110,000 origamis waiting for you, floating in a rainbow of hope. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. San, San Francisco's Poet Laureate. Let's hear it. That was moving and so apropos. Alejandro Mejia. Okay, we mentioned uh, something called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. If you don't know what they are, you have not been here more than a month. I always say any San Francisco event that doesn't have a sister in the audience, backstage, or on stage is not a San Francisco event. Bring on, representing the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, Sister Evolution. And Entourage. As always, we are so honored to be a part of this magnificent celebration. I would like to um, also thank my sisters, uh, Sister Patton Leather and Sister Zsa Zsa Glamour for joining me on stage. And we have Sister Mayjoy tucked over there in the wings. I would like to start off by making a confession. I have not filled out my wish. And my wish would be, I wish Donna Sachet would give me her necklace. Doesn't she look gorgeous? <laughs> Maybe dreams will, maybe wishes do come true. So, today we are gathered here in the heart of our city, beneath a symbol of energy, life, and hope for the world. You have decorated it with peace, cranes, and lights, wishes, and dreams, and most importantly, your energy. And now, on behalf of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, Inc., we gather this energy and strength that we may send it to the nuns of the above to give to any and all that need its strength. To release the energy of hope that this magnificent tree represents, I will ask each and every one of you, if you please, every time you hear me say, we say, you will invoke the words of Harvey Milk by saying as one group, you got to give them hope. Now please raise your hands towards the tree of hope. And we say, you got to give them hope. For all LGBTQ young people struggling with bullies and tolerance, we say, you got to give them hope. For all transgendered people fighting to live authentically with dignity and respect, we say, you got to give them hope. For all those who seek to protect the rights of LGBTQ people across the world, we say, you got to give them hope. For our sick and elderly in need of a loving word, a sign of hope, we say, you got to give them hope. Each of us gathered here tonight gives witness to the power of hope in our dark world. To you, we say, you got to give them hope. To each of us struggling with our own dark places in our hearts, we say, you got to give them hope. I ask each of you, as you leave here tonight, a promise to reach out to at least one person in your life this holiday season and say, I love you. To give you strength to do so, we say, you got to give them hope. And now I'll ad lib just a little bit, and also to all those regions that have recently been affected by natural disasters, the eastern seaboard of the United States, and the continuing efforts of Japan and other places in the world. We say, you got to give them hope. And now, with the energy raised through from this tree, from the energy raised in our hearts, 
we seal these blessings and anoint you all with the holy blessing of our love. And now, sisters, please administer the glitter. Last year, we got in trouble with housekeeping, so we're just going to do pretend glitter this year. <laughs> As this glitter spreads, may your love and cheer spread. May this glitter remain on you as long as it is needed and work its way to every part of you that needs magic and light. And now, loudly please, repeat after me, one joy, one joy. more joy, more joy. Always, joy. always joy, and continue to repeat after me, blessed be, this blessed day, Tuesday, December 4th, 2012. And as sisters, as we always end our blessings, again, repeat after me, amen, amen. Our women, and all the others. Thank you, and have a beautiful holiday season. This is how we celebrate the holidays in San Francisco. You're not in Kansas anymore. Let's hear for the sisters. Okay, before we go any further, we have one more speaker. I just want to remind you that some of you have been sipping some fabulous uh, champagne and wine tonight. Barefoot Bubbly, you're everywhere. Let's hear for Barefoot Bubbly. Afterwards, you're going to be enjoying food that was indeed donated by restaurants, and they are asked again and again by so many organizations, so many events, but they did donate tonight. I want to recognize them uh, with lots of enthusiasm. Lefty O'Doul's, Cafe Floor, Hot Cookie, Bombay Garden, Ike's, Little John's Candies, and Paxi. I'm sure I've missed somebody, but I'll have one more chance to say some things. Before we uh, close out, that we have one speaker that I am personally looking forward to. This is going to kind of close out the program, and at the close of those remarks, we're going to do a countdown. And if you think that tree's pretty now, wait until you see it lit. We're honored to have a very special guest tonight, Isabel Allende. <laughs> International best-selling author. She's considered to be the world's most widely read Spanish language author. Now there's something. Her novels include The House of Spirits, Paula, and The City of Beasts. Several votes have been made into films. 2004, inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Letters. 2010, received Chile's National Literature Prize. And in 2011, awarded the Hans Christian Andersen Literature Award. She's also not just a writer, a humanitarian. How appropriate to have her here. She's involved in many efforts to improve the lives of others around the world, promoting hope and social justice. Honored to have you here today, and your husband, attorney and author William Gordon, both are here tonight. Uh, tonight, Isabel will share her message, and then I will help her to do a little short countdown. I think we're going to start at 82 and go down to, no, probably 10. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Isabel Allende. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like a rat compared to this lady. A rat, really. Well, thank you for this invitation. Hope, that's the key word for the year to come. Not irrational, but realistic optimism. There are many good reasons to be very hopeful. It's time to put our losses and frustrations in a paper bag and burn them. They belong to the past. The new year is like a blank page where we will write our dreams and hopes. What do we hope for? Not only jobs, the end of the recession, and a Congress that works for a change. Let's be greedier. Let's hope for a better country and a safer world, for less fanaticism and more compassion. Let's also wish for, a, for good fortune for this, our lovely city of San Francisco. At a personal level, 
Let's hope for less stress, because the crucial events that determine our lives are beyond our control. Bad and good things just happen. Let's not blame ourselves when, too harshly when things go wrong. There's usually room for a lot of mistakes and, no, and for new beginnings. Strength comes from overcoming obstacles. That's how we learn, never from our success. We learn from our mistakes. If we hit a dead end, and we do all the time, we just turn around and start again. May, we all make foolish choices, and yet we are here, standing, aren't we? We San Franciscans feel entitled to good coffee and permanent happiness. I agree with the coffee. But happiness is overrated. There's something there's nothing wrong with struggle and some pain. If nothing hurts, we are dead. All this whining about the state of the world is so annoying. The world may not be good, but it is certainly better than it was before. This is why I'm hopeful. <clears throat> Never before has humanity had so many resources, knowledge, power, and information. It has never been so interconnected. We are stronger, smarter, and we live longer than our grandparents. We can certainly destroy the planet, but probably we will not. We will improve it, because that's what we have been doing since the Stone Age. We are moving forward, and here in California, we are always a step ahead of everybody else. So these are my hopes for the next few months, that we can all have meaningful lives, that we can be close to each other, participate in our communities, serve and volunteer. Caring for others is cheaper than therapy. It makes a lot of sense, and you get to meet nice people. I hope that we will be more joyful, creative, and playful that we will have less caution and more passion in matters of the heart, and that we will enjoy thoroughly this crazy and extraordinary city of San Francisco. When we light this beautiful tree, let's make a wish. Let's wish that all of us fall in love with life. Thank you. I'm going to buy one of her books now, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, we're not starting at 82, because I want to see how that tree looks. Are they ready upstairs? There's my signal. We'll start with 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy holidays! Isabel Allende. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all of our speakers, all the people that are on stage, Jeff Cotter for coming up with this wonderful idea. And if you don't come, there won't be a party. So come again next year. My wish that you'll ask me to MC this again next year. Let's enjoy some refreshments now from Barefoot Bubbly and all those wonderful restaurants I listed. Take your program home. Thank those individuals and businesses. Thank you for being here. I'm Donna Sachet. Thank you.